Hey guys, yeah. welcome back to uh, OMG and welcome to the Overclocking uh, TV Twitch channel. Today uh, on the show we have two guests with us, which is a little bit of a new thing uh, for the show this year. Uh, so we have Joe again from BJPC over there and we also have Rory, also known yeah. as Buried One, uh, who's a crypto miner and crypto expert out of Belgium, if I oh, yes. Rory. everything right. Uh, hey Rory and hey Joe, welcome to the show. Yeah. Hey. And again, as go. usual on Let's the show. Go. Yep. On the show we also time. have uh, Isai Truffman. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'm doing the click click yeah. and things. And we have Tibori yeah. as well. So that's it. <laughs> no. So uh, as you guessed it, today we are going to talk a lot about uh, crypto. But uh, there are also some other pieces of news um in the news that we should uh mention first. And I think uh, Isai you prepared a little bit uh, of uh I think about of, of things to say. So yes, uh, before we dive into uh, the world of cryptos and the different things with Joe and Rory, um, there's a few things that uh, catch our attention this week. Uh, first of all, Maxon, which is the uh, company doing Cinebench, released Cinebench R20. And Cinebench mm. R20 is the new benchmark that uh, hopefully will replace R15, which is uh, coming to like uh, to the limits. As, as we have seen, there was a a lot of discussion about uh, the workload old. and things, and I mean, it, it was indeed getting old. And uh, the and the engine that is behind uh, Cinebench is actually the same one they use in Cinema 4D, which is the uh, uh, rendering station for uh, VFX in the and, and 3D things in the VFX world, like cinema. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, uh, on Cinebench R15, that was using the actually 15s, the same uh, engine as the 15 versions from Cinema 4D. So now R20 is using the same engine, uh, rendering engine, as the, as the 20 version. So that's pretty much how uh, it changed the things. Uh, in terms of a major change, so it's the rendering that is changing. So the, the scene is a different one. It's not the, the, the balls anyone. It's actually a room that is being rendered. It's mostly focusing on CPU rendering as well. And to say the least, the UI did not change at all. So that's, that's actually a good point. That's the first thing I noticed, <laughs> yeah. actually. Though. So the UI of the benchmark hasn't moved anything at all, the buttons are the same place, the pseudo ranking of where your performance results are compared to others and other systems or something are sort of at the same place as well. The main thing that changes is really just the image that is rendered, at least on the visual side of things. So basically the change are under the hood yeah. and uh, we can't wait to see how that's going to turn out with you guys and benching that. Uh, keep in mind that there's no standalone benchmark as we used to have with you know, Bench R15. Uh, you can get it on the Apple App Store or on Windows Store. So we have to wait, uh, still wait to see how that's going to turn out. That can be distributed uh, in a standalone version, so we can just bench that anywhere. And I guess that uh, if you want to do just regular benching, you don't want to install anything from the store. And that's maybe also why right now there's nothing about that benchmark uh, added to Ibot, or it's not added to the rankings or anything. And it's just this week. I mean, it's just this week. There's, and there's it, be some time. And, and like you said, the other versions have their standalone versions right there yep. added to Ibot that you can download. So maybe that's something that's going to come later down there during the year, I suppose. I hope. Okay. We, we will see. Sounds uh, interesting. Oh, yeah, that's going to be fun yeah. to have a new benchmark. Uh, I personally like Cinebench as a benchmark. Um, a there's a lot of things that uh, always can uh, can, can be involved in that, but uh, I like the fact that it's visual, it's fast, and you can actually explain what it's doing. So it's not just yeah, a right. rendering and then you don't know what's, uh, what's in there. Uh, that was the first news for this week. Second news for this week is a uh, spoiler alert. Uh, basically, there was a challenge, uh, a challenge, a findings by some security analysts that there is a new kind of flow in some of the Intel Core CPUs family. Uh, if you guys remember Spectre and the Meltdown, which was one of the big topics from last year, uh, this is pretty much the same uh, in the same area that mm -hmm. the uh, this challenge arrived. It's very new. Uh, it was released this week, even though that was a uh, even though that was something that was uh, disclosed. I think December last year, so we are 90 days after the disclosure. So now it's being made public. Um, there's a few things that will be fixed. Uh, a few others that. We don't know yet. Uh, as I say, this this news is like from three days ago, so we still have to wait for what will be uh, what will be made from that. Uh, for the regular folks, eh, nothing gonna happen. Like let's face it, even Spectrum meltdown, unless you run servers uh, for clients or you have uh, personal data uh, handling and so on, 
I mean, for your laptop, that's not gonna change anything. For, for most of the things you will do in your everyday life, that's not gonna change anything. That's gonna change stuff for people in the data center industry, uh, as Spex and Meldum did, uh, and Meltdown did, because if you gain access to this kind of hardware, then you can access to other kind of uh, security flows, and then they trickled on to a security mm -hmm. issue for, for your whole data center or your whole system. So that's one thing. Uh, that was one thing from this week. And on other news that I, uh, maybe you have the, the link from Vince. Yeah, just, um, Perfect. Uh, uh, last and uh, last yeah, third and last bits of news was Vince Kingping uh, posting some teasing of a video. He was uh, actually benching uh, yeah. Port Royal <clears throat> on the 3D mark, and he was benching on what appears to be a very massive card with water cooling in there. So this was this is obviously one of the VGA card uh, because actually Vince works at VGA, and um, there was quite a few things, and it was scoring uh, pretty nicely. But the the key part, the key part is not just the score and the card. The key part is the frequency of the card, which was at over two gigahertz of the core, uh, the clock core. Well, obviously that's for the 2080 Ti uh, Kingpin Hybrid Edition. Um, as you know, on the RTX series, the um, the fact that the power uh, system and the overclock is not always at max speed is always gonna be, is gonna be varying within uh, a specific specs of thermal dissipation and power. So obviously, that was the maximum that was there. Um, I can't wait to see if we will be passing the actually the average uh, frequency of this uh, of this core. Mm -hmm. uh, if that's stable at this frequency in average. That's good. That, that's gonna be uh, that's gonna be good to see, and it's a water cooling card, so that's gonna be very interesting. Uh, good to point that the VRM had actually their own fan as well on the cooler. Yeah, I, I did not notice something in that video. Uh, there's a in the background. There's a guy with very long hair that looks like Gamers Nexus. Oh, I, I don't man. know if he was there <laughs> in the office, but you can see it at the top right there, and I don't think that many people okay, okay. noticed. Put it back, put it back again. Okay, okay, so you see it very briefly at the start, right? So you play the video, and there it goes up the screen, and then, uh, 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 you see there? You see there, at the top? Right oh, there. interesting. Right? Okay, so <laughs> someone is benching somewhere with someone else. So for those who haven't been in the EVGA office, over there, that's the desk where Tint, so the engineer that is working with, uh, with Vince is uh, working. So probably, I don't know if that was... If that was our friend from Gamers Nexus, no idea, but it definitely looks like it could be him. So maybe it just I'm just starting some rumors here. Maybe it's completely <laughs> wrong, but I'm I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It uh, really looks like it. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, we and know. so we we lost our friend Joe. I nope. think Joe, uh, you dropped your camera for some reason, but uh, it would be nice to have you back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's good. He's back. No, no, he's back. Okay, it was a bug on my side. All good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, interesting. Perfect. Excellent. Cool. So, yeah. Any other news? Uh, that's uh, that's it for the news from today. Uh, we have uh, we have a show to go on, and uh, I mean, let's let's dive right into it. All right. So let's start with yeah. you, Rory, because you're uh, our guest today uh, for the show. Uh, yeah. Let's for, for the people that don't know you. Uh, let's start first with a quick intro of who you are, uh, what you're doing in life, how you got into doing what you're doing today, and explain what it is. Okay. Well, so I am buried one crypto mining. Uh, I have started mining crypto since about 2016. Uh, I didn't know about Bitcoin mining since 2012 already because my cousin actually introduced me into it. Uh, between the years of 2012 and 2016, I played games and did school and everything like it. And eventually when I was watching a, a gaming video from, from uh, Barnacle's Nergasm, he was talking about uh, crypto mining and if it was profitable. And I, I actually thought like, hey, uh, let's let's start back into crypto mining and make some videos about it because gaming content wasn't really like uh, it was pretty hard to edit every day and it was getting pretty long. It's a lot times. of work, yeah. Yeah, so I started getting more focused on GPU mining because Barnacle's Nerdgasm also uh, mentioned Ethereum uh, and that you can actually mine it with your graphics card. And there was actually no tutorial on the Internet on how to do this. So I started making these videos and, and I was like, wow, yeah, I can just figure it out. It took me about a week to get my first miner uh, set up with my GTX 970s. 
And I posted this on YouTube and out of nowhere, people started saying like, wow, this is crazy. I've never seen uh, tutorials like this. And can you make more of those uh, for different coins and stuff like that? Uh, and then it actually all happened. Like my YouTube channel started growing super rapidly. Um, I was like going crazy as a train, but also I had pretty good knowledge about uh, crypto itself because I was pretty much, pretty much into it from the early days. Um, I never actually liked asset miner, miners too much because I thought it was too centralized when, when big mining operations were actually up and running. So I, I more got into the GPU mining aspect so people at home could just take their uh, PCs and turn it into mining rigs and earn some crypto. And then it, it all kind of started happening. The super mining boom came up and you just shoot out of the ground with with thousands of subscribers a week. And uh, yeah, right now it's a little bit settled because yeah, the cryptos are a little bit down now. <laughs> but that's how I got into it. Yeah, most of <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So when when did you do your very first YouTube video? What what date was that? Uh, I think it was uh, like my gaming video or my uh, the, the the one on crypto. I think it was literally somewhere in November two thousand. No, I think earlier even. I think it just in February two thousand sixteen or so. Because I actually built my first mining rig uh, on November 2016. So I was already mining a few months before that for sure. Yeah, that was my actually first uh, with the frames and stuff. <laughs> so yeah, it's a long time ago. So, so you, got, you got into that world of crypto through one of your family members that was already doing uh, that, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, they were actually declaring him crazy back in 2012 because you're burning uh, electricity. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, he was he was uh, <clears throat> mining really much uh, bitcoins actually, and he actually sold all of them at one hundred dollars uh, because back then he, he was mining it when it was worth nothing, and he mm -hmm. cashed them out too early. Let's say. I'm not sure if he still has some because he, he doesn't want to talk too much about it because. He knew yeah. he, he has none. Then yeah. He has none. If but he had some, he would say everybody. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. He, he totally regrets like selling them. So I, I, I kind of followed his footsteps. Uh, he was ten years older than me. He still is. Uh, so he he was like twenties or so as well when he got into it, and he was really like, yeah, this is the stuff you need to get on it. Uh, he he also tested like the first USB ASIC miners and stuff. And starting setting that up in his uh, in his bedroom. So yeah, I remember people had those uh, USB kind of dongle extensions. You could like, like click <laughs> yeah. of them, all of them on the USB. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's how he started, and then they got bigger and bigger, and then the the eventual end miners came out, and then it it's it's really getting noisy back then. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. It still yeah. is. So so for those who um, remember, so there has been already like two, well maybe two crypto mining booms, right? So there's the one from last year that ended up yeah. somewhere around the end of December where like, it was like 20K no, was US dollars. Yeah. No, that yeah. was last year, 2018. Yeah. 20, 20K true. last year. 2018. Yeah, that oh, yeah, was a year and I... something, a year and two months, right? And That's then there great. was another one 10 years before that. So this one you were not part of, but probably that person was part of it. <laughs> And, oh, yeah. uh, and I remember that's the first time I also mined at that time and, and then I gave up for some reason. I should have continued. But anyway, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it, it was at that time, yeah, that uh, uh, people also were using GPUs as well to do mining of Bitcoin before the first ASIC miners came out for USB and things like that. Yeah, um, that's true. Yeah. So all your tutorials were mostly focused on GPU mining. Yeah. Uh, I saw also that you did some reviews about hardware for um, recent cars like the Radeon 7 and things like that. So yep. what's the current sort of like status of uh, GPU mining now? Is it still something worth it or should people just like give up? Uh, well, right now it is uh, pretty much on the break even part. Uh, when, you get, when you really have to pay a lot of electricity, um, countries about uh, that are above 25 cents per kilowatt hour, they are actually making a loss. So if you're underneath it, you can still make a profit, but you need to be really selective on which GPU you're going to buy and mine with. Uh, for example, the new RTX graphics cards from NVIDIA, 
they run really efficient, especially the RTX 2070 is, is pretty much worth it. Um, but to be honest, it's like uh, thinking about it is if, if there's going to be another mining boom coming in, um, Ethereum just did their hard fork with cutting the rewards to uh, two thirds of what it was. So now it's going to be even harder to make a nice profit after that. But I am really expecting uh, the crypto prices to go up soon again. Uh, there is a few factors that are really uh, tweaking it and, and touching the crypto again that will probably rise the prices pretty soon. So, but if it's really worth just still buying a machine, that's, that's, that's always a risky part. Uh, but you need to consider like you only actually have to get half of your return of investment because you can always sell your mining rig for probably over 50% of the price you purchased it for to gamers, for example. And most people right now that purchase $20,000 worth of mining rigs, well, they probably mine over $20,000 on crypto. And when, let's say they sold all their cryptos when it was crashing down, and they still have this hardware sitting around, then it's really good to actually do some new ROI in it. Because if, let's for example, a few weeks ago, Grincoin came out. Uh, the first days when you were mining this coin, you were really making bank. Uh, it was because always when a new coin comes out, you can literally mine the heck out of it and cash in. And the people that still have mining hardware at their homes, well, they have the only opportunity to mine those new coins because you already have the gear. So if you still have to go purchase it and stuff like that, you're two weeks uh, later and then you have no more chance on getting the first uh, big right. profits. So that's it's, a, it's, so that's a yeah. strategy basically. If you still have yeah, a GPU and you stop yeah. mining, then your only hope to make some money still is to go for those new yeah. coins. Yeah, exactly. Like always when a new coin comes out, you can, you can literally ROI within a month if you're the one of the first to be in it um, and selling it on the right right time is also really crucial because I think that the green coin actually started at two hundred dollars and one week after it all it dropped all the way back to twenty five dollars so right. if you were the first guy selling the first green coins you, you literally paid off your whole mining rig the first but day. you have to be the first <laughs> yeah yeah but you need to be really looking out for this if you really yeah. want to make such kind of coins uh, and profits of it it's it's crucial to keep scouting on this uh, and most people, I can I can definitely tell when they are at offices and they know they have like a graphics card in the computer, they can just mine on it for sure and just put it in their own wallets. Uh, I've seen it many times, even even guys that work in data centers, and they tur just turn every server from the company into mining, and they just cashed in so much from from actually the company paying the electricity. Uh, <laughs> it, it's yeah, you get ideas like that. So I've seen a lot of things. Uh, I've seen crazy things on, on how people do mining, uh, on, on which ways and stuff like that. But it's, I don't know, it's, it's not pretty profitable to go and buy a mining rig right now. But if you really have some hardware at home, well, yeah, you can always give it a shot. Because if the, the crypto value turns up again, let's say you mine a single Ethereum, it's only $120 or so right now. Um, well, if the the coin goes back up to a thousand, you you made a thousand dollars with mm -hmm. uh, your old mining hardware or your game PC. So it's pretty yeah. much worth it, I think. Oh, so how yeah. do you keep up with uh, all those new coins? Because I mean, there's probably like um, I mean, like about a year ago or six, uh, like a year and a half ago, uh, there was pretty much a new coin every week, and you had all yeah. those ICOs at the same time. I mean, it was yeah. crazy. You could literally. Yeah. You have the problem that you could not mine everything that was out there. Um, now I think there's a lot less, but how do you keep up with that? Because you have to you have to reinstall new software for mining those coins and things like that. I mean, like you have yeah. to spend a lot of time on that, which you should also account in your RI, basically, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, you need to know uh, some basics. You, you need to know, like, I need a wallet, I need a miner, I need my hardware, uh, how to set it up, tune it correctly with, with overclocking and stuff. And uh, I'm being bothered by my cat. <laughs> no way. <laughs> well, yeah, so uh, you need all the basics of knowledge of, of mining, first of all. Uh, and then to keep track of the coins is, is very important, too. Um, 
you actually need to uh, be in groups on Telegram groups. On uh, you need to follow YouTube channels that do GPU mining, like me, uh, Bitsby Trip, and guys like that. Um, the first time you see a video like there's a new coin, you just instantly need to watch this video and see like how to set it up. And even though if they just mention the coin, like let's say Grin Coin is coming out, what you can do is you can check out the release date of the coin see when it's going to be coming out. Uh, that day when it comes out, you just browse the whole internet and try Google, like yeah. how to find Grimcoin and find the first uh, first topic on, on Google on how to mine it, which miner people use. Even if it's totally unoptimized and you're mining a coin, you're already making the big cash. Right. Uh, the next step you need to do is find your exchange that is actually going to be able to support and sell this coin, because mm -hmm. because it's good if you. I mean, it's good if you mine it, but if you can't exchange it for yeah. anything else. Yeah. Uh, and by exactly. the way, we have to say that these are just opinions. So that's your opinions. That's your opinion. Doesn't yeah, we're not financial advisors. So they yeah. don't yeah. take these as advisors. Uh, yeah. Just to no, make sure no, no. these are opinions on experience that people had. Just had yeah, to say exactly. it. Yeah, oh, actually, on the topic of uh, the value of the coin is inherently related to what you can do with it. Uh, yeah, mostly. For the shitty coins, like I call them shitty coins, but all those yeah. useless small coins that they launch all the time, right? Um, yeah. Those coins are basically don't carry much value besides the yeah. fact that you can eventually exchange them from either euros or US dollars or exchange them for better coins, like exchange yeah. them for Ethereum or whatever, trade them for something else. Something's yeah. better, hopefully. Uh, exactly. So now the, the question is, what's the whole point of all this? Because at the beginning, crypto and cryptocurrency, the, the point was to replace money. And um, yeah. so you can still buy airline tickets for crypto. Yeah, uh, I mean, true. You, there's a bunch of things that's still difficult to buy with crypto. And um, so I the can't pay my rent with crypto. No, there's a, so everything basically, <laughs> this is, I think, why crypto went down, in my opinion. It's just yeah. everyone was so crazy about, hey, you can make quick bucks. And then everyone yeah. sort of like started realizing, um, but there's actually nothing to do with it. So, <laughs> so yeah, everyone true. started that's... just dumping their coins. No yeah. one kept it because there was yeah, no value in keeping it for the long term, right? You just exchange it yeah. before it crashes. And the yeah, fact that yeah. everyone does that, then it just crashes then. Okay, it's yeah. all done. So what was the yeah, point? You need, you need to have a purpose of the coin. That's yeah. totally true. Um, for example, the reason why I think uh, crypto is going to go up pretty soon is Bitcoin is going to release uh, something called the Lightning Network. Um, right. And uh, when, when this goes live, they can make as much transactions as you want a second. And uh, that was one of the crucial parts. If you look at Bizar, real banks, they can process like millions of transactions uh, an hour and they don't mind mm -hmm. so much. Uh, yeah. With Bitcoin, you that's, have this yeah, that's one of yeah. the bad things. So, yeah. so, so the the main concern with crypto and because of the fact that uh, the reward is being awarded, and and the consensus is being uh, decided, uh, one of the main issue on on Bitcoin, and that's what we are going on with uh, with the Lightning Network, is that it required more and more and more and more computing power for everything that was you no know, being yeah. able to to do that, and then. Basically, if, register transaction, right? Yeah, to basically have yeah. your your list of history of transaction, it was getting more and more time, was more and more costly to do. So that yeah. was one of the of the main challenge on the Bitcoin side. Uh, Ethereum yeah. had the same discussion as well at some point. Uh, I haven't been following for the past few months what happened. Yeah, happens faster, there. but it's also a problem as well because as you as all those uh, coins grow, they all become slower. So yeah, that's true. Yeah, well, it's yeah. more difficult to get them yeah. to get the reward. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but you also need to think like um, if you, if you look at the countries, for example, Russia really supports Ethereum really much. Um, mm. Then then you have America; they love Ripple for some reason. But mm. actually, I'm not really a big fan of that because it just can't be mined. Recent, like I don't know, they just come from somewhere, <laughs> and nobody knows where it comes from. And then Bitcoin is like controlled by nobody, but still it, it can it can do the things like the Lightning Network, stuff like that. Um, then you have those weird splits because Bitcoin Cash came out. Uh, and then, then Bitcoin Cash split up into two idiot names that I mean, like, are... Yeah, for, for people yeah. that don't know anything about coin, they yeah. don't understand anything. Like, no. seriously, like, exactly. that's also probably one yeah. of the problems of cryptos is that yeah. if you're not really into it, 
You cannot read yeah. into it. You just, yeah, just don't get it. It doesn't make yeah, any I, sense. Yeah, I see. I see. You, like how I explain this to people when they don't know what I'm actually talking about. I say like, yeah, Bitcoin is like the big bang. And then you have like a million cryptos coming out of there, like exploding and thinking like, hey, maybe I got a chance. But maybe at the end it just comes all back to one coin or maybe three coins that are actually having a purpose. And then all the people that think like, I'm going to make a new coin and a new coin. Yeah, it's, it's just going to disappear mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. That, that there's a big, uh, and that's what we have seen in the past few months as well. There's a big uh, trust issue as well. I mean, if, yeah. you, if you own Bitcoin, it's like, oh, yeah, there's a hard fork. Yeah, I have to waste the cash now. Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, I can't take a like a twenty dollar bill, split it in two, and I have like forty bucks now. It's the same idea. So this is a big uh, trust yeah. issue that's gonna happen for that. Yeah. So, yeah. Same problem with uh, stocks when they split stocks. They, I mean, you they dilute you, you, the stock. Well, you end, mm -hmm. no, you don't even dilute it. Technically, on the balance sheet, it's the same thing. You you just have to double the amount, but they are twice less the value, right? And that's the weird part with crypto is that when they split it, there's this moment in time where they're both the same value. And I think that's one of the huge problems and the problems why people either don't invest in it or think that it's a little bit like uh, it's all bullshit. It's all like uh, it's a money thing for those who control it or whatever. Yeah, uh, but it's true. it is it is not really uh, it doesn't look at a, a fair thing because basically if you're not there at the right time, then you yeah. you might just lose a lot of money and make twice less than those who are. And there then you have the same issue as the stock market. If you're not an insider, you yes. won't be able to make you won't be able to cash on it. But there's so, a regulation yeah. for the stock market. You can do it. But the stock market trading. is actually <laughs> regulated. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can't yep. do insider trading. Like, I mean, that's that's illegal. Yeah, um, that's true. But yeah, you have but to the, understand how the, the whole system works to actually yeah. get in there. You can't just say, ah, I have like, like 20,000 bucks. I will just put that. I mean, if it's pocket money for you, yeah, sure, do it. I mean, whatever. Yeah, if it's exactly. your your life savings, don't play with it. That's, that's, no. that's as easy as no. that. Yeah, that's okay. risky. Yeah, yeah, the trust issue is huge, especially with those ICOs. Um, oh, yeah. I, I trust none of them. Uh, maybe a handful that I really know, like it's. Yeah. But even though when I know the ICOs that are that created their ICO, they are actually going away from being an ICO and just make a private blockchain out of it. So they don't have to do anything with those names anymore. Uh, because we all know like stuff like BitConnect happened. They just scammed $750 million like in yeah. one day and, and the trick on how they did it is so easy they just said like oh you can you can actually trade the coins on our own exchange and eventually when everyone purchased this uh this coin from them what they just did is just close the actual exchange and they just walked away with the bitcoins and everyone oh, yeah. just had the tokens but they were worth nothing anymore because they just took out the bitcoins but they did something wrong with theory so that is how, what, what happens and, and uh, trusting those big operations, now nah, it's, it's really risky. Uh, I never recommend it to people or to do business with ICOs. I, I'm not a big fan of it. So I never sure, actually I haven't seen any example of a successful ICO that is actually still in the business <laughs> of running whatever they were standing for. I mean, well, have well, you I seen got, any got, news got, recently? Like really? Like, of, uh, yeah. like uh, some guys that did an ICO were super successful and now they have a a fledging business that uh, brings with in the, profits with the, with and... the business model validated to because ICOs were that. ways to raise money, right? Mm -hmm. To build a business. Yeah. So what happened to all these dreams? Like uh, it's it's like if you go to VC and ask for money, and then the next year, well, I don't know, I build the company. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah, that's true. It's weird. Yeah, yeah. I've seen I've seen one successful one, and 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 yeah. he did it pretty good. He was actually uh, using the tokens in a game. So he wanted to make something like Counter-Strike. And if you kill someone, you get tokens from it. And if you die, you lose tokens because you give it to the other guy. So mm -hmm. actually what's going on is like, if you're a really good player, well, you can actually make some money out of this game. And if you really suck at this game, well, then, <laughs> then you're going to lose money. Right. But, a little bit um, like a player, uh, what is like it? Like a, a staking play one, the game, movie? let's say. Uh, ready player one. Ready play one where you you lose yeah. your cash or you drop your mm -hmm. and actually you actually yeah. really losing your stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah that's how how it worked. Then you can buy new guns with the tokens or something if you if mm -hmm. you played good. But you can also join rooms that are different. So if you want to really stake like one hundred dollars on a on a kill, 
well, then you can do that. But if you yeah, only it's want to like, I mean, in the end, it's kind of like poker. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, exactly. That's, that's the same. That's the same concept. Yeah, and and yeah. and what we are, um, what we're actually, what I'm waiting to see is more and more of those. Because okay, crypto is based on blockchain, but more yeah. and more of this transaction-based, uh, uh, I mean, paperless transaction uh, yeah. out of a currency that's not a currency actually, out of something that have just a value. I mean, I can trade you like this glass and tell like, oh. I have 200 of these glass that are worth it, it that much. It's better. Yeah. So it's just a matter of transaction. I mean, <laughs> and, and actually, just side notes, uh, there's a very good uh, documentary from Vice, uh, Vice News, about yeah. uh, in the US on how people were actually buying drugs out of tides because the price of tides never moved. The fluctuation of the price of tide was actually less than the currency in some countries, so actually people were buying drugs with tides uh, for the value. Anyway, uh, look wow. for it, I can't remember how what that was, but that, that was an uh, interesting thing. It's the same thing. You get something and you tell, yeah. hey, these have this value now, and you exchange that as a value. I mean, that's exactly what we do with, with cash, even though cash is actually controlled by uh, like the national bank, etc. cetera. And yeah, I don't remember where I was going with that, but, ah, yes, yes, yes. Uh, what I'm expecting to see is to actually have more and more use case of smaller kind, of, I mean, more uh, concern kind of, of kind of, I mean, we're going to call them crypto. I mean, Facebook, gonna, yeah. I mean, they announced they will be doing yeah, something for that. WeChat, yeah. WeChat in yeah. China, they're already using microtransaction like that. They just do don't they create a transaction. Do they use crypto for it or they just use money? Uh, they officially have their blockchain. Yeah. Uh, in the back, yeah. so it's technically a <laughs> cryptocurrency. In investor but, hashtag keyword. Uh, uh, well, or maybe well, it's based on of, AI as well. Yeah, and also uh, one of the biggest ICOs that nobody knows that is an actual ICO, that's Telegram. I Telegram. mean, actually, Telegram have, uh, yeah. have way to exchange yeah. values. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. But actually, the value is not in the crypto itself, I think. I'm um, not sure. Um, it could be. I'm not sure. But how this actually works. I actually need to figure out something and like make an interview with those guys, like the background story of Telegram. If you speak Russian, interested. that should be okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like a handful of ICOs, uh, yeah, you can't trust anyone in this crypto world, yeah. I can tell you. Like everyone thinks only on money. That, that's oh. all they do. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> There's one thing as well, like the, uh, for example, text team. If Steam comes up tomorrow and says, hey, we have the Steam coin and you can buy the games with it, that's exactly like you have like uh, like points on a card when you go do your groceries. Yeah, yeah but work. if the coins always flow towards Steam, then you buy... You or the it's coin. actually in that ecosystem that yeah. they stay in. So I see there's going to be more and more of use case for that specific usage yeah. of kind of that's crypto true. rather than actually something that is super broad. Because the... the Having something that is super broad, the biggest issue is the adoption. I mean, if yeah. you can't use it, it's worthless. Yeah, true. I mean, it's. I mean, you can have a Venezuelan cash right now. It's. <laughs> it's worthless. Yeah. I mean, you look yeah. at your bill, and it's actually changing value. I mean, we yeah. made we made the joke. We made the joke with some good friend in South Africa uh, two yeah. or three years ago when we went there, and it's like, if I go to uh, to the uh, cash dispenser right now, I get out a twenty. If I look at it long enough, it's gonna change value, <laughs> and this is this is something that happens on official currency that everyone is using. So this yeah, is impacting everyone. Nice. Like this is impacting yeah. everyone in the country. But yeah. when you do that on crypto, it's only impacting the one that are actually using it, which is a very yeah. smaller part of the uh, of the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, when when is when is crypto actually only usable? For my opinion. Uh, only when the whole world supply of money is inside Bitcoin, for example, because then there is nothing to trade anymore. It's pretty simple and straightforward. Uh, what happens is right now there's inflation. We like back in the days you, you would take a few years to make one extra billion dollars, like on money bills. Uh, but right now you can do it within weeks. And soon it will be months, uh, like weeks, days, and then hours and minutes to make a billion dollars. And that is what happens to those countries. And if you look really much back into history, uh, most of the time it only lasts 150 years for a currency to live. And then it starts getting inflation Maybe problems more, or so. Yeah. And then it goes crazy. And if you look back to the history, 
like uh, US dollars, euros, they're all nearing the 150 years of existence. So right now, like the first point, like Venezuela, for example, they're just freaking out because they are hitting this inflation problem. Uh, but the problem is uh, with Bitcoin, all the big people know that this is uh, like reasonable because uh, Bitcoin has a certain kind of supply. So there's only going to be 21 million coins to be mined. But you need to consider that almost 30% is already lost on old hard drives and people that don't know their yes. private keys anymore. So they said like, yeah, actually what happens here is that the supply is shrinking instead of going bigger. And so I'm sure it keeps to... shrinking because I mean, yeah. it's human nature. You lose your passwords yeah. and stuff like yeah. that. And the people exactly. that are the regular people mining, or if they don't have it in the Coinbase yeah. wallet, and they could still lose their Coinbase wallet access yeah. anyway. Uh, yeah. There's no one to help them to get it back. There's nothing you yeah. can do about it. Yeah, that's true because recently it happened to a really big exchange and nobody knew actually yeah, yeah. the code. We know it's based in Canada. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we know. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah, that's what's happening. And that is why they stated like, um, uh, because it was on the World Economic Summit or something. Yeah. Uh, and so they the said, guy like, died, right? And yeah, no one knows died. the password and even his yeah. wife don't know. So, so they, f and they found some of the cold wallets, but when they managed to unlock them, they were empty. Which, which is, this story is like, I hope they do a movie like this. They, they will make a movie or a book out of it. Sure. <laughs> They'll probably be able to pay by the guys with the sales of the book to themselves. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. No, but exactly. it's yeah, huge. It's like a, a hundred and yeah, nine million, yes. I think. Yeah, but, yeah, but that is that is mainly the problem. But uh, if you look at how banks work today, uh, we're currently at three hundred fifty percent. Like there's three hundred fifty percent more money than actually exists, and the reason is uh, when you go to the bank with a thousand dollars the bank is actually allowed to uh, lend out 90% of the money to someone else that is coming into the bank. And yeah. if he puts his money to another bank, uh, they will rent out another 90% of his money that he already borrowed from someone else. And this has happened like 350% right now. So in theory, all the banks lend out everyone's money three and a half times. So what happens when, when uh, it's going to collide is when everyone goes to the bank and says like i want to withdraw my money and that is when the banks start falling and break down because they said like i don't have 3.5 times what i got in my bank which and is exactly is what happened actually in, yeah. uh, actually start of yeah. what happened in 2008 and this is what happened with quadriga cx as well so people were yeah. like hey i want my cash back it's like oh, okay we can't pay anyone like, yeah exactly exactly because they don't have it <laughs> yeah and in greece it was the same like everyone wanted to get their money out of the banks when greece was like falling and the banks just said like we got no more money and they just closed the atms and nobody was able to go on his bank account and uh, uh yeah that's, yeah that's by cool. the way uh, speaking about that uh since the crack of the 20 yeah 20 20 oh, eight, crack, crash. no 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 crack not crack uh, <laughs> Yeah. Prices. Since yeah. since the issue, the financial uh, yeah, turmoil or collapse, yeah, the yeah. financial collapse. Like I think it was twenty oh eight. Yeah, twenty oh eight. Uh, there is some international guidelines on how banks uh, needs to make sure that they have the they have more the stock, fundings, right? and they need to have some part of their um, balance sheet the, the balance sheet that actually converted to something else. So. If they give cash out, they need to have like more uh, a bigger percentage of that in something else, in equity yeah. somewhere, in uh, in funds and so on. So that's why we have seen, although a lot of like speculation actually went down a little bit. So all the subprime things. Very interesting if you want to look uh, to, for that. We we have yeah. not five hours to explain everything, and um, <laughs> we might yeah. not be the best people to explain that. But basically, <laughs> if there is no such such thing as free money. <clears throat> That's, that's as easy as that. Yeah, uh, that's true. You're always going to end up paying for it in the end. And if it's not paying for it with cash, that's going to be paying for it for something else. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. something else. Mainly. So what, what do you say to people that are that want to go into mining today? Is it do it? Is it still worth it? Or just don't even try and just buy coins and hold on to them as an investment, just like you would buy stocks in a company? Well, I mostly recommend uh, try and get an old computer or uh, use your gaming PC, 
try out some mining, look some videos up, like how to mine Ethereum, get mm -hmm. used to everything, get used to payments on your wallets, uh, try and do some transactions with your friends. Because, for example, I once purchased a beer for 0 0.1 Ethereum. <laughs> but if you look at it now, it's a pretty expensive beer, uh, especially when it was $1,000 for, for Ethereum. So I actually could have paid $100 for my beer. Um, but I did this to introduce my friend into getting a crypto wallet. And I said, like, you go get my beer and I will do a transaction to you. So he got used to it. And uh, yeah, just try and talk with it with your friends and get into it. Teach yourself the things you want to learn. Uh, see what blockchain is. Uh, see what mining does in the blockchain. Uh, try transactions. Uh, go buy something on new egg because I think they still accept Bitcoin still accept payments. It? Yeah, they still accept oh. it, I think. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like a lot of web shops actually do. Um, yeah, just get used to it. That's the best you know, tip as I can a, do. As a, in the Czech Republic in Europe is accepting yeah. uh, cryptos as well. Yeah, yeah. there's many. And as far as trust goes, so where should people store their coins? Do uh, are you more into the cold wallet you write on the paper <laughs> or something like Ledger? Uh, well, if, if you have someone that wants to troll you or your house gets on fire, I think your paper wallet will be broken <laughs> and you can't find it back. So I recommend um, just using your cell phone or a uh, cloud storage. Just put a text file somewhere on a cloud storage, maybe even on Facebook. You can, you can send a text file to your friend and say like, Keep the safe for me, man. I swear. And then I'm uh, not gonna do that. <laughs> Facebook will keep yeah, but, it safe for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but you don't give your wallet ID and stuff like that, you know. Right. Like you can, you can give everyone partially something because Facebook has really secure servers. They have it like spread across the world, like seven or eight times in every country. Uh, they are even uh, like solar flare uh, resistant on their on their servers. So if you if you once have a problem, you can just go and grab all the text from your friends that you once sent and Facebook actually kept it for you, for example, or uh, something similar to it. It's, it's, it's easy to do. So are you saying that if, if we want to get to your wallet, we need to look at your Facebook history? <laughs> oh, yeah. You need to find all the friends I send a part to and then uh, you, you can put the puzzle Oh, that together. was the letter you sent me earlier? Like, uh, there was just one character, like an A. Like, uh... So, you know, yeah, maybe. You do that one? <laughs> like I would say, like keep this and just type a, a sentence or something, and then just do it to everyone. And when you need to search, you just write the names of your friends somewhere, or you just remember it. Your best friends, let's say. Most people only have like five best friends, to be honest. Uh, like really good friends you can trust. So uh, if you if you send it to those guys, they all keep it for you on Facebook without even knowing it. Yeah, that's smart because cold wallets can be hacked for sure. Um, what you can do is, for example, my favorite is free wallet. Uh, what you can do is just log in with Facebook and uh, free wallet will recognize uh, like, oh yeah, this, this is his account. You don't need to use your private key. They keep it for you. So that's pretty I safe. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't trust that at all. Like, like I'll be honest, I don't trust that. Yeah, that's like true. I, I don't even trust my my Chrome or my Firefox to store my password. Yeah, I think when you have like ten thousand bitcoins on on any wallet, you you're really uh, not you trusting anyone. Well, that's that's the whole point. That's why people actually yeah. spread them out. I mean, yeah, you, and there's some other people that have fun actually moving the found around for some reasons yeah. that they don't yeah. want to explain for. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, because uh, in, in Switzerland, uh, one of my business partners told me recently, uh, they have actually built a bunker for really wealthy people that, that want to store their Bitcoins inside this nuclear bunker. And it's, uh, it's solar flare uh, resistant. It has its own servers to, to keep up with the blockchain. And it's really unhackable. And most of the people that go there have over 10,000 Bitcoins, most of them. So that is pretty interesting. So I, I think maybe those kind of places, when you really have a lot of Bitcoins, it could be nice to just go there and ask those guys, hey, how much does it cost you like, to store my Bitcoins there? But if you have like... But once again, you're, you're putting trust into someone yeah, else's hand. True. I mean, it's, it's always the same thing. But you do that for your money at that's the bank true. too, right? You do that with the bank. You do that with your password. I mean, you lose last pass, one password. Yeah. You're doing the exact same thing. 
Um, yeah. I do have I do have a questions to get back on the topic of hardware and mining specifically because that's was what we were yeah. talking about. Um, yeah. In today, uh, actually, as of today, I have a computer that I use uh, mostly for gaming during the evening. If people actually just get to that, yes, they can yeah. start trying to find the coins and so on and so forth. Uh, what will be the impact on the hardware? Like, as you have been doing some testing, yeah. How actually, yeah. how how often do you end up running into some kind of I'm gonna say that I won't say failure, but challenges with the hardware. Um, well, actually, almost never. the The worst thing I had was uh, like cables burning out because you just put too much power on the cables when you build your mining rigs. Um, I broke in total. I had over two, three hundred GPUs running at once. I only broke broke about two GPUs. And the reason was because the fans wore out after a year or two. And what actually happened is because the fans stopped running, the cards overheated. But the rest of the cards, they are still running. They're still fine after yeah, about two or three years, actually, right now. It's been three years of running. They still run fine. Uh, even on, on going to CES Las Vegas, I asked a few uh, brands like Gigabyte and Zotac, like, did you guys get some cards back from mining damage or something like that? And they said, like, yeah, to be honest, we got more more cards back from gamers than from miners because miners try to keep the graphics cards as cool as possible. Uh, the only thing and issue you're going to have is the dust that is going into the graphics cards. So you do need that to is clean the, them properly. Yeah, yeah. Once in a while, like every six months, you just blow them out with some air pressure and your GPU should be totally fine, actually. Like, I never actually run into a problem. They just run flawless if you do the right thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what, yeah, so you, you were mentioning like burning down cables. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, we heard from the industry, we had some people from the industry at different shows saying that uh, on the PSU side, this is what will mostly happen. Um, would yeah. you have any recommendation on what kind of things that people should look for in terms of uh, PSU if they want to go mining with it? Or replacement cables. <laughs> oh, yeah, also. Yeah, well, uh, if you're if you're uh, putting your risers, your mining risers on SATA cables or Molex, uh, don't connect more than two because graphics cards tend to draw 75 watts out of uh, out of the riser. Like the PCIe is 75 watts first, and then it comes in from the VGA cable. So uh, when you add up two cards, you're already on 150 watts, and that's exactly on the the maximum power a SATA or Molex cable can deliver. But in theory, you can run three cards on it, but then you have chance on fire or burning the cable because it starts to heat up after a while. Like after a week of running, you can get into those problems. Um, on power supplies, I always recommended, let's say you're going to build a mining rig that's going to consume 1,000 watts, just buy 2,000 watts of power supplies because uh, if you double this, you will be exactly on the efficiency. If you look up power supply efficiency, you will see that you have a spike on 50%, and that is the most efficient. Uh, right there, the power supply will run the best, and you will also save some power on your electricity bill uh, at the end. So that's a good tip on that. But yeah, most of the time, just buy twice as more as more powerful than you're going to be using. Yeah. And the main reason I will not want to uh, to mine in my in my office here is that. I don't trust the cable in the walls. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, you can easily run about uh, 3,000 watts out of the wall without having in Europe. issues. In Europe, in Europe. Yeah, in, in, Europe. in, in North yeah. America, that's a big concern. Actually, yeah, we yeah. we always yeah, make we... fun because we use uh, <laughs> like a, a crepe maker, you know, like the, the very French things or racket thing. And well, it's... Yeah. There's, there's only one plug that works in the whole home. Yeah, there's only <laughs> one plug that will sustain that. Oh no! Yeah, it's about two thousand watts. So yeah, because we have about two hundred thirty volts. Yes, and I that think helps. America has yeah exactly. 110, yeah. Actually, yeah. it's one ten to one thirty, depending on how it's actually being. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It depends on the country here. Yeah. So when you have higher voltage, you can easily run more wattage as well. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you need to you need to think about it, and 
yeah, burning down your house is pretty dangerous. I always recommend not to overkill it. And uh, yeah, I've seen some crazy stuff of burning down houses, man. <laughs> like uh, <laughs> yeah, guys some crazy in, uh, yeah. mines, like uh, operations. The last one, I, the last one I saw was a uh, few months ago when there's this flooding in Shenzhen. And they had this yeah. this huge yeah. mining operation in Shenzhen, and it was like completely flooded. They basically were taking the rigs and just washing them because they were full <laughs> of full of mud. It's like okay, let's wash them dry and see if yeah, it's pulling again. Yeah, that's true. I I even uh, tweeted that one. I think on Instagram as well. Yeah, <laughs> it was it was because there was a, a mud slide or something or a yeah. big flow. Yeah. And then the whole farm got killed, but it was like 10% of the whole network of Bitcoin. Yeah. It was a big impact. <laughs> yeah, that can happen. It happens yeah. when you put it on one place. Well, I think that was a pretty interesting topic. Quite different from, from what we have uh, the, the used to do. Hey, Joe, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, people well, are asking, what, what the hell are you doing? So now that we're I, done with the crypto, maybe you can tell us what you're actually working <laughs> on. Oh, yeah. yeah, do you guys mind if I just leave uh, at the same time? Uh, oh yeah, true. You have to to go somewhere else. Uh, yeah, exactly. No problem. No problem. Thank yeah. you very much for being with us on the show. Uh, highly appreciate. If people want to find you, where can they find you? Uh, on YouTube, just uh, type in Buried One, and you will find me there. Yeah, most of Perfect. the time. Cool. Well, th thank, you. thank you very much for your your uh, sharing your opinions with us, and hopefully yeah. we'll see you again another time. Yeah, exactly. Hopefully. <laughs> see you guys later, hey, man. Thank you very much. Yeah, bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Cheers. Oh, so, Joe. You. Tell us. <laughs>
Um, I will be product manager um, with uh, ProGamer Hardware. ProGamerWare, excuse me, it's still so new, just uh, the US first day. So ProGamerWare oh, so will be So for those who don't know, that's the part that does uh, Noble Chairs as well, right? Yep. Can you see that? <laughs> so um, actually, uh, my story with Case King is a bit longer. I met Alex Marsteller um, at my application day at AquaTuning, which was at the same day the 10th anniversary party of AquaTuning. So since then, we kept in good contact. And now I'm very happy to have him as a group leader. Nice. And so uh, from Berlin, which I knew from my study attempts uh, in the mid 90s, I think I will find my old ways back. And Ooh, I'm yeah. it's an awesome my, place. much forward to just go to the most vibrant place uh, next to Braunschweig. <laughs> 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 and uh, yeah so this is uh, news for me so the next shows i will try to meet up some places uh, where i started my modding in austria actually my, my very first modding steps uh, for that i need to make uh, yeah some some calls for being allowed to show but yeah that's my pleasure of course so yeah that's it for me uh was it's nice perfect. to be here and this is it was excellent interesting Interesting, I think the first time I really listened to crypto mining content, uh, interested because, yeah, well, it, I was just doing my thing here, just scratching on uh, scratching on this uh, tail of the plane um, and thinking, wow, I know I get it. So it was really enjoyable being the, the silent listener. And so thank you very much for this great. And thanks for entertaining the audience so they can listen and watch you mod at the same time. <laughs> yeah, the scratch, scratch, scratch. And yeah, all the swearing, uh, I really need a discipline not to. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you very thank much, you. Joe. Uh, guys, yeah. last, last update we need for tonight is by the end of the month, on March 29th at 6 p.m. at the Condor Theater at PAX East, we are hosting a panel, a discussion panel about live building a computer. I mean, to PC. Uh, we'll be building two PC with guests from different parts of the North American continent. Uh, if you're very going cool, to PAX cool. East, that's where you need to go. So that's Friday 29th at PAX East in Boston at 6 p.m. at the Condor Theater. We have a lot of good news for you guys. A lot of uh, partners actually are uh, providing hardware and giveaways. So we can't wait to announce that. It's going to take a few more uh, days. And obviously see, uh, see you guys there. Yeah, excellent. Otherwise, see you next week. See you next week. Bye-bye. See you next. Bye-bye. Have a good time. Bye.